All right. Good to see you here. And um, I'm looking forward to, to the service tonight uh, from the Word of God and, and just being able to, to preach to you, teach to you, uh, whatever I do these days. And uh, uh, I will answer that. A lot of people say, Brother Beckham, you're a southern pastor, but you don't preach like a southern pastor. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's, it's like this. Um, I come to help you. I don't come to perform. Amen? And, and a lot of preachers, they perform and, and they deliver a sermon, and they are great sermons. But um, there's, there's no, a lot of times there's no heart there. It's just being done out of duty because it's Sunday, and, and what does preachers do on Sunday? They preach on Sunday. Um, but I come to help you, and I come to hear your, hear your burdens. I'm here because every year I leave with all these burdens, and, um, and I remember you during the year, and that's the reason on Sunday morning, uh, I, I said, do you remember what you asked me to pray for last year? And, and some of you act a little surprised that I actually know what you asked me to pray for a year ago. But um, I take your burden serious, and, um, and, and, that's, and, and, and when I speak, I, I speak as, as I, I was in your living room. And I didn't know this, but I am known as the living room preacher. Uh, Brother Beckham, it's as if you just walk into our living room and just talk to us. Well, um, I would love a preacher to do me that way. You know, because sometimes we face things, we're down in the dumps, we, we're facing hard times, and we come to the house of God and they just preach in general and tell you to go home. But uh, I try not to be that way. I try to try to feel with you, because you know my Savior is a sympathizing Savior, and and I think his preachers are to be the same way. And so I try to be that uh, when I come, uh, when I uh, preach in a church, not just here, but all over the country and out of the country. I try to be 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 that type of preacher. Well, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. Um, we, we started there this morning. I would like to pick up uh, where we left off and we talked about. Now, you'll find that um, I review. I review almost every night. And by the end of the week, you'll know what I preached on. You'll, you'll be able to tell me all the sermons. And, and that's something else that when I go to these Bible colleges, I teach the preachers to, to make sure they, they, they get what you're preaching. If they can't tell you what you preached a month from the day that you preached it, you need to, you need to check up. You need to check up. Because we need to make, I try to make it as simple as I can, and I preach to the youngest child in the auditorium. And because if they can understand it, surely the adults can, right? And so Matthew chapter 6, um, let me just kind of quote the main saying of that verse. Um, Jesus is talking there, and he, and he, and he very plainly tells us in so many words, when you pray, uh, go into your closet, go into your private uh, place, your solitary place, your restricted area that, that you have set aside just to pray in. And we found that Moses uh, had, had his mountain, Abraham had his uh, grove, uh, Isaac had his field, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel and David, you know, they had their chambers. Uh, Jacob had his place where he wrestled with God. Now, my question is, where do you have? Do you have? 
Because if you don't have, then you need, you need to leave here tonight with the determination, I am going to have, I'm going to have a room specially just for prayer in my home. I'm going to have a place in the yard. I'm going to have a place out in the garage. I'm going to, but you're going to have a restricted area where you go and pray. Because some of you, uh, in, in every church, people are facing besetting sins. And if you will take that besetting sin and give it to the Lord every day and all during the day, it won't be a besetting sin much longer. You'll get victory over it and you'll be able to, to live like you should live for the Lord. So we, 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 talked about, uh, we talked about all those people this morning and then we talked about Hannah a little bit and we, we shared with you the way she prayed, but she prayed from her heart. And that, that, that's something that we can learn from, from this dear, dear lady. But she prayed specifically, too. She wanted a man and child, and so she asked God to give her a man and child, and he did. And, and so uh, those are just some nuggets that, that I have found that we can learn from this dear lady uh, in the Bible that prayed to, to her God. And tonight, I want to deal with one of the greatest or the greatest apostle that has ever lived. He wrote many books of the Bible, and his name was Saul before he got saved. And then after he got saved, like many of the people in the Bible, their names was changed. And God took Saul and, and gave him the name of Paul. And Paul was a great, great prayer warrior. He, he, we're going to look at three passages of Scripture that the Apostle Paul prayed. And he prayed wonderful prayers. But you know why he prayed wonderful prayers? Because he had a wonderful relationship with God. And he didn't just pray about Paul, he prayed for others. Um, when you hear someone praying, it's me, 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 me. Uh, you can mark her down, that's not a biblical prayer. We should not be praying for me, me, me all the time. It's okay to pray for yourself, but you need to learn to pray for one another. As a church family, you need to pray for one another uh, as, as, uh, and pray for your family, of course. And then we need to pray for the lost. We need to pray for our missionaries. We need, and on and on and on, we, we need to pray for, we don't have a king in America. The Bible said we need to pray for our kings in the book of Colossians. But uh, we do have a president, and, and one lady and man said to me, I don't like him, and, uh, and I'm not going to pray for him. I said, go ahead then and get spanked by the Lord then, because the Bible says that you are to pray for those that are in authority. That's not a necess that's not uh, that's not something that that's not an option. Uh, well, Brother Beckham, what do you mean it's not an option? It's not an option. It's a biblical teaching. Colossians chapter 1 and, and verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and all through that chapter of chapter 3, we are to pray for those that are in authority. And um, I may not like him either, but I am obligated by God's word to pray for the president of the United States. Not just them, but Congress and Senate and all those people that we are to pray for. Now, uh, go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 9 and verse 11, and I'll start there just for, for a few moments and, and give you a little history about, about Saul. Saul hated the Christians. Saul hated the, the church and uh, and he traveled around uh, just to just to persecute the Christians and he and he wanted to kill them and and in the particular day that I want to share with you was the day that Saul became Paul 
and, 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 and he accepted Christ into his heart. And oh my, that hatred for Christians became love. And, and, and Paul just fell in love with God's churches and God's people. And uh, that's what salvation will do for you. It will take a hateful spirit and a hated spirit and, and turn it into a loving spirit. Uh, that's what salvation, real salvation. I'm not talking about baptism. I'm not talking about church membership. I'm talking about a real experience with God. Oh my, it will change you completely. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things become new. Amen. And you know the verse. And so I believe it because it happened to me at the age of 16. And it has happened down through through the years, uh, as I learn, as I matured, oh, <coughs> and I haven't arrived yet. I got a long ways to go, but you do too, don't you? And and so we have to take all this in consideration. But but listen to Acts chapter nine and um, verse eleven. And the Lord said unto him, He said unto. Uh, Paul here, he said, I want you to arise, I want you to go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, the one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. He said, Ananias, I want you to go there, and you'll find a man that used to be Saul, now he's Paul, and, and, and you'll find him praying. Now look up here for a moment. Um, when This is where I get the prayer first doctrine in the Bible. Prayer should be number one in your life. Uh, I can take you back to the life of Christ, which we will later on into the week, maybe tomorrow night. We'll all talk about Christ and his prayer life. But um, uh, both of them, both of them, Paul started his ministry out with prayer. We should start our life out with prayer. Our Christian life should be soaked with prayer uh, because prayer is number one. Uh, what does Timothy say? Timothy says, I exhort thee therefore, brethren, that first of all. And then he tells you what is first of all. Supplication, intercessions, prayers, and all those things. And so it's very plain. I do not apologize that, that, that the Bible teaches that prayer should be number one. Let me, let me even uh, drive that nail in a little deeper there. Um, when the disciples heard Jesus praying, what did the, after they heard him praying, and, and what did they say? One of them, one of them a spokesman of the others, and he, and he said to the Lord, he said, Lord, teach us to be, to be great preachers. No, he didn't say that. He, he, he didn't say, Lord, I know you love souls. I want, to, I want you to teach me to be a soul winner. He didn't say that. What did he say? What did he say? He said, Lord, teach me, teach us, teach me and teach my fellow brothers here, teach us to pray. Why? Because prayer is more than this. It's more than this. It's more than kneeling. It's more than any of the postures. Prayer is a personal relationship that you that you get at the time of your salvation when you say under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the drawing of the Holy Spirit and when you say yes to him at the time of your conversion let me tell you that's when that relationship uh, becomes real in your life and it will change you that relationship with God. And that's what happened here with, with Saul um, that became Paul. And, and so I want to, 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 to go through three prayers that Paul prayed. Now, if you'll smile at me, we'll get done quicker. 
okay? Just smile. There it is. Keep that smile right there, and we'll get done quicker. Um, look in, look in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14 through 19. Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm, I'm giving each one of you time to get there. Ephesians chapter 3. We'll begin reading in verse 14. And as I read it, I will bring out different points that I want you to get a hold of tonight. Matter of fact, these are prayers that you can actually pray. There are no, uh, almost every week someone will ask me, uh, Brother Beckham, I don't know how to pray. Uh, what do I say? I don't know what to say. And, and I'll, I'll take them usually to these three prayers. Sometimes I'll, I'll take them to other prayers in the Bible. There is no better words to pray than pray the words of God. There's no better prayers. And uh, matter of fact, when you pray these prayers, you'll be praying in the Holy Spirit and you will be praying in the will of God. A lot of times our prayers are not in the Spirit and a lot of times our prayers are not according to the will of God. And so, but you cannot go wrong by praying this prayer found in Ephesians chapter 3. Look at it with me. For this cause, Paul is talking and he's very concerned about this church here. Um, and, and he says, I bow my knees. There's, a, there's the most popular posture in the Bible is kneeling on your knees. But just because you kneel on your knees doesn't mean that you are praying. Uh, a lot of people kneel on their knees, but they are not in the spirit of prayer. And, and so here is Paul on his knees praying unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That is a powerful, powerful name. And, and so we need to use that name. It's not a name to be, be ashamed of or afraid of. And then he goes on and he says, whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would now listen to the prayer, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now, wow, how, have you ever thought about the riches of God, how rich he is? And, 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 and we, have, we have access to those riches in the name of Jesus. We can actually claim those riches for ourselves. And, and not only that, but he said, look at what else we can have to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. We are strong. Most, most of us in this room are fairly healthy and, and we are strong physically. Uh, but that's not what Paul is talking about here. He's not talking about physical strength. And, but he is talking about here is, is being strengthened, not in our intellectual mind, but we are to be strengthened in the, in the, inner man, which is the heart of man. And so a lot of people are trying to live the Christian life within the flesh. Your flesh is weak. Your flesh will, will, give, will give in to pressures. Your flesh uh, will not stand up when it should sometimes. It will break down under the pressure. But let me tell you, if you are strengthened by the Holy Spirit of God, it will carry you through the pressures of life. It will carry you through uh, heartaches and deaths in our family and all these financial woes and all that stuff. The Spirit of God will help you to stand 
and stand firm. But if, you, if you're not praying in the Spirit, and by the way, that is not just that it, the Pentecostal people are not the only one that teaches that. Anyone that believes the Bible will teach that we are to pray in the Spirit of God. Uh, Baptists have been doing that for years. And um, you say, well, are, are you downgrading the, the pen? Oh, no, I would never do that. I would never do that. And I'll tell you, one of the main reasons I would not do that, my dear, my mother died when I was 24. Dad remarried a lady, which was a Pentecostal lady. And she was my mom longer than my mother was my mother. And, and, and she was a, a very, very godly lady. And she prayed for me and my ministry every night, uh, wherever I was. She said, Benny, I bow my head and I pray for my boy. And uh, so I, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting down the Pentecostal uh, religion at all or denomination. But, but I will tell you this. They are stronger uh, in, that, in, the, in, in, in praying in the Spirit than what we are. And uh, I'm one of these preachers that if our camp is not doing right, I preach against our camp, okay? And um, because uh, we need revival in, in, in fundamental circles. And this is an area where we are weak, and that is praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying to be strengthened in the inner man. And let's go on. And then it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Oh, my soul. Would you do me a favor tonight? Would you check up and, and, and ask yourself, am I really in the family of God? Uh, do, I, do I face problems with faith? Do I, or am I walking in the flesh in my sight? See, that may be the reason why you're having problems, because you're, you're walking in the flesh and you're walking by sight. But all Paul says in the book of Hebrews, if you're not walking by faith, matter of fact, he just comes right out and nails you and me to the wall, where, where, where he says, um, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's impossible. It's impossible. You can't do it. And, and so we, 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 we must get that in the inner man, and then we must let it dwell in our hearts by that same faith that we are walking by. And then it goes on, listen to this prayer, that we are to be rooted and grounded in what? Love. Love. Our churches uh, are not loving like they should. And, ah, um, oh, Brother Beckham, you, you're oh, too old-fashioned. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm just biblical. And in and, and this prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed for this, this group of Christians, he also prayed it for you and me. This scripture is as much for us as it was for the people that Paul was talking to. You understand that? It's important. And, and, and so Paul said, I want you to be ground, uh, uh, rooted, and I want you to be ground. I want you to be tap rooted. I want it to go deep into your hearts. And then he goes on. That you may be able to comprehend with all, with all saints comprehend what Paul I want you to comprehend Benny I want you to comprehend the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of of the love of God I want you to let it uh, flood through your soul the inner man I want you to live for me that's what I want and then he said I want you to tell the church uh, the same thing these these next two weeks I want you to get them to the point of, of, of realizing and comprehending. Not just come to church these 14 days or how many days it's going to be, 11, 10, 11 days. Uh, not just come to church, not just be a good church member. No, 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 no. But, but you come to comprehend. Let it go into your mind. 
Let it go into your soul, and um, and and you'll 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 reap benefits from it. And and then notice what else. Oh, by the way, are you comprehending this, or is it going right over your head? If it is, raise your hand, and I'll I'll stop and I'll start all over. Oh, no, preacher, we're comprehending every word. (laughs) Sure you are. I hope you are. I hope you are, because it's so important. And then notice what else it says in this little prayer. It says, and to know the love of Christ. We are not the love. Brother Benny should not love you as Brother Benny. I am to love you as Christ loves you. That will change everything. If, if, I love, if I love you within the spirit of Benny Beckham, okay. But, if I, but that's not what Paul's prayer is about. The prayer of Paul here, that I am to love you all by, I mean with the same love that Christ loves you. You know, that would revolutionize the church overnight if everybody would love each other as Christ loves us? Wow. Comprehend that a little bit. Swallow that one. Digest it for a minute. You digest and I'll drink some water. Did you digest it? You got it in your heart? Now, you need to put that to practice, and Brother Beckham should put it to practice too. Now, notice what it says here uh, in, the, in the end of this prayer. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled. This is powerful. Be filled with what, Brother Beckham? Be filled with some? No. All the fullness of God. Oh my. If everyone in this room would be full of the fullness of God, it would revolutionize the world. Amen? It would revolutionize. We would see what... uh, Evan Roberts saw. We would see uh, what Jeremiah Lanfear saw in Manhattan, New York in 1857. Uh, one man, one little guy, the little, in a Dutch reform church, um, wanted to pray for one million people to be saved. Oh, Jeremiah Lanfear was so full of the Holy Ghost of God, and he was full of, of, of the love of God for people that he said, I am going to pray that one million people will be saved in one year's time. And, and, and if you want to come and pray with me, I'll, I'm having prayer meeting at 12 o'clock tomorrow. I'm going to put out a sign on the sidewalk, and we're going to have this wonderful prayer time. And there were six people. Some books said three, some six, some ten. All I know, he had a small handful praying with him. Did it stop him? No, because he, he, he was full of the Spirit in the inner man. He had, he had the love of Christ for lost people and for Christian people. And, and, and he was putting it, it was evident that he had this love. And he was loving people like Christ loved them. And he went to, to prayer every day. And, and the prayer meeting grew and grew and grew. And six months time, he had 10,000 men, men only praying in one location. The ladies were somewhere else, and I guess they had the children and teenagers with them, or the young men might have been with the older men. I'm not sure, but they were all praying. In one year's time, he went across and around the world. Around the world. And the recorder person 
was recording the people that was getting saved around the world. How they did that, I don't know. But at the end of one year, what happened? The same thing could happen today if we would just have the faith that Jeremiah Lanfear had and the determination and the perseverance. Oh my, if, if God would just burden somebody's heart to do that. But we don't. What happened, Brother Beckham? How many got saved? In one year's time, I'll tell you. Are you ready? Might, might surprise you, but it shouldn't. Over one million people recorded that they had gotten saved. And, and one of the greatest revivals America had ever seen. Oh, can that happen today? It could. It could happen today if we would do what Jeremiah Lanfear did. Uh, Evan Roberts was not anything special, but he was a man that loved God. He was a man that believed in God. He was a man that was full of the Spirit of God. And he just did what the book told him to do. Now, turn with me to Philippians chapter 1, another great prayer of the Apostle Paul. Can you see how this man prayed? Can I ask you, does your prayer life look like this any at all? Does it symbol this, this, these prayers of Paul? Because when we get into the prayers of Christ, oh my soul, it's going to blow you out of the water the way the, the Savior prayed. Oh, preacher, are we going to study the, the, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6? No, that's not the Lord's Prayer. Jesus could never have prayed that prayer because he was a sinless, uh, without blemish type of guy. That's the model prayer. That's this, the, the uh, disciples' prayer. That's man's prayer. Are you, are you listening? Check it out. Well, Brother Beckham, where is the Lord's Prayer? John 17. You have heard me say it many times. And, and, and John 17 uh, is a little longer than the model prayer. But if you want to memorize the real Lord's Prayer, John 17... And it would be a good prayer for you to memorize. Now, Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Would you look at that with me, please? Paul said, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all truth. Matter of fact, he said, Now, listen, folks. I am going to pray that your love will grow that you will mature in your love for one another. And um, our churches needs to learn that. We need to grow more and more in knowledge and in judgment, and we need to do what Paul is praying here. And then it says that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ under the glory and praise of God. I do not have time to, to deal with every one of those, but I will take what I feel is very, very, all of this is needed in our churches today for us to have real Holy Ghost revival in our miss. We're going to have to do all of these, but can I deal with just one, please? And that one is the, the fruit of righteousness or, or the fruits of the Spirit. Oh my. People will say, the fruits? Oh no, it's only one fruit, but it's nine clusters. And, and, and each one of them, uh, I could preach, um, we could go a month. We could go for four weeks just dealing with the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, or, or, or just one of these prayers. We could go a month or two, or a year, or just, just with it, the one in Ephesians and here in, in Philippians. But have you thought about this? How many, how many of you, those, that cluster of, of fruit, um, those nine clusters, which is one, how many of you can say 
They're all active in your life. Yeah, that's what I thought. Do we beat up ourselves about that? Do we quit coming to church because we don't, we are, those things are not active in our life? Do we just throw in the towel and quit? Do we quit reading our Bible? Do we quit praying? Do we quit being soul winners? Do we quit giving the missions just because those things are not active in our life? No, we don't. What we do, we get them active. How do we do that? God, I'm sorry. We repent. We say, Father, I'm sorry. I haven't been a good child of yours. And I want, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to do better. But don't just tell him you're going to do better, but do better. Do better. Do better. So it says here, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. And then now look with me at the last one, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 12. Colossians chapter 1, you thought I was going to say Colossians chapter 3, didn't you? Uh, uh, Which is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Even if I don't preach it in one of the meetings uh, during a month, I will read I will read Colossians chapter 3 at least, at least once a week because I need it for myself. Because that's the essentials. Those are the necessities to, to a life of prayer. Colossians 1, 9 through 12. Of this cause we also, since the day we heard it, Paul said, I have heard some things, and since that day, I haven't ceased to pray for you. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I hear things about my churches. You say, your churches? Yeah, I, 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 take, them, I, I take the churches I preach in, um, uh, I, I just take them personal. I, I just pray for you. I pray for pastor and his family. I, I pray for you. Um, I, I don't have to be here to pray for you uh, because the love that I have for you and I have had for you for 10 years now, I, 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 just, I just keep it in my heart. And, and, and I do what Paul tells me to do here. Paul said he doesn't cease to pray. And the pastor and I talk a little bit during the year. And... Um, um, as, as I hear different things, I pray for you, I pray for the church, and, and that's what Paul said. Paul said, I've heard some things, and since I've heard it, I have not ceased to pray for you. And, and things that you tell me uh, after the services, uh, they, go, they go into my ear, into my heart, and they lodge in there. And, and, and I pray, I pray for you. Um, I, I, I really do. I pray for you. And then notice what else it says. And the desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now this prayer is really important. And, um, and so as I pray, I pray specific things for you as a church family. And you so, oh, Brother Beckham, um, you haven't asked my permission to pray. Well, I'm, I'm sorry it's too late. I've already prayed this for you. Should I have sent a letter to you, certified letter, get your permission so I could pray for you? Uh, no, I don't think so. But, but look what I have already prayed for you. That you might be filled, filled with what? With the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. See, you are to live in the will of God. 
And the will of God is not that hard to understand. People say, well, I'm just seeking God's will for my life. Uh, what, are you, what are you talking about, seeking God's will for your life? You don't have to seek God's will. You can know God's will. Uh, it's very plain in the Bible what God's will is. Amen? And maybe I'll have a chance to go into that uh, here in a, a little bit. Um, and then it says, strengthen, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. I want you to persevere uh, with joy in your heart. And, and uh, I, I, can, can I just be honest with you? Sounds... Well, Brother Beckham, it sounds like you're going to anyway. Well, I am, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's better to ask for, for uh, permission here. But, um, but listen, listen to this. It says, according to his glorious power and all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, um, because if, if, you are, if you are serving God with joy, some of you need to do this. You need to tell your face that. <laughs> Hello? You need to say, face, I'm happy. Because some of you don't look happy. Amen? You, you, you look like you're having a pretty tough time. But you know, I'm praying for you. But you know, you don't just need Brother Beckham to pray for you. You need to pray for yourself. You need to ask God to help you. And because, see, this, this prayer is for us, that we may be strengthened with all might according to the glorious power and all patience and long-suffering with joyful. Now listen to this. This is biblical stuff. This is not optional. It, and it says, giving thanks unto the Father which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and lights. Giving thanks. Can you give God thanks tonight for what you have gone through this past week? Can you give God, can you look to God and say, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. You say, oh, no. Well, you should, because, you know, life is tough. I'll be, I'll be the first one to tell you. It's real tough when you don't live according to these prayers. But if you'll live according to these prayers, life may still be tough. But you'll have the Lord right there with you, willing to help you. But see, if you push him away and, and you're not even trying to live like, like these prayers is telling you to live, church, you're on your own. You're on your own. Men having trouble in their home, you're on your own. You're on your own. That's why we need, we need to make sure that our heart, the inner man, is doing everything that we know to do because that will bring Christ right there with us. And he'll say, Benny, step aside, son. I'll take care of this. And he'll take care of it. But when Benny was in the way, it was tough. But I rediscovered my prayer closet as my wife was suffering and dying with cancer in her breast, in her brain. And I realized that I was trying too hard 
too hard in the flesh to cope with everything that was happening. And then one particular night or day, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And I said, I didn't cry out to God um, for hours. I just said, God, I'm sorry. And from that particular time in my life, things began to change. And for 21 years now, we have had the greatest ministry I've ever had. I've seen hundreds and thousands of pe people get right with God and, and meetings goes for weeks and weeks and weeks and, and um, books has been written, magazines been written, the Bible is coming out soon. All this stuff, none of it would have been possible if I'd have continued on the road I was on 23, 24 years ago. I am so glad that I got off that road, got on the road that Christ invited me to, to travel on. I would have never met you. I would have never met all the other people that I have met. This is serious for Brother Beckham. And I hope that it will stay serious. When it gets to the point, if it ever does, and I hope and pray it never does, that it's not serious with me, that I don't love you as Christ loves you, If it ever gets to that point that I can't do that, which I don't think it will, but if it ever did, I would just sit down. I want to love you. I want to, when I say I love you, I want you to be able to feel that love. I want you to know that. When I get to the point that I'm too busy to minister to you out in that foyer or here in the auditorium, I remember just a few years ago that um, there was a young lady right here, she's here tonight, that said to me, can I talk to you? I might have said to her, can I talk to you? And she accepted Christ that night right here in this room. Has been baptized, been coming to church here since that time. I can tell you of others up front, a young man prayed with him. And God is working with him, and he's working with God. If I ever get to the point that I'm too busy to do that type of thing, I'll come off the road. But now, let me apply that to you. You should never get too busy to love one another like Christ loves you. That's what's going to continue to grow this church. That's what's going to continue to make th you different than the other churches around you. That love of Christ. Don't lose it. Keep these prayers active in your life. Now, if you're here tonight and you don't know my Savior, I would love to introduce him to you. Pastor will 
uh, be down here in a few moments, and and um, I'm sure he'll be glad to take a Bible or get someone in the church to take a Bible and deal with you, men with men, ladies with ladies, and uh, and then you can leave here tonight just as happy as you can be. You don't have to leave here tonight down in the dumps and um, and stressful and all that stuff. You can give it to the Lord tonight, and I hope hope you will. Hope you will, and then come back tomorrow night. We'll we'll just carry it on uh, each night as I have uh, tonight. So let's pray, Father. I love you. I I just I just the Lord sharing my heart for a few moments, and thank you for allowing me to do that. And Lord, I pray that um, if there's if there's somebody uh, here like like that young lady years ago, Lord, I pray that um, they'll, they'll give their life to you. Or like that young man that may be dealing with something in his life, Lord, just uh, let, let them just bring it to you. I know if they'll cast it upon you, you'll take care of it. I know you will because you, I have seen you do it many, many, many times down through the years. Thank you. I sure love you. In Jesus' name, let's stand uh, as Julia plays a little bit for us. Now, the altars are full. Uh, uh, the altars uh, 